right, kids. So this is our first installment of distance learning. Um, just a heads up, I have my cat in the room. So if you hear a bell jingling around, that's what's going on, just like he did now. Um, so what you're going to need for today's artwork is a pad of paper or just a piece of paper is fine. Uh, I'm going to be drawing with a marker. Uh, and you're probably going to want to use a pencil and an eraser if you have access to it. But if you only have a pen or you can find a colored pencil or something to draw with, anything will work. Okay, so what we're going to work on today is drawing a picture. This picture could be anything. It could be um, what you're doing, things around your house, um, a still life, meaning um, maybe like looking at a bunch of pencils together or your workstation where you've been learning. Um, the other thing that we're going to be working on is using that drawing to get a family member or a friend to be able to recreate it. So before we get started with the actual drawing, I want to give you some helpful tips on how to be successful with this artwork and how to actually teach someone else to draw that piece of artwork. So the first thing I'm going to talk about are those basic shapes that we've talked about. So circle, square, triangle, oval, rectangle, diamond, pentagon, remember a pentagon has five sides, hexagon, which has six sides, octagon, which has eight sides, star, heart, and finally crescent. So you can use any of these shapes to help describe what your artwork looks like to your family member or your friend. So that's a really good starting off point. So our next thing is going to be drawing your actual picture. So when you're thinking about your artwork, and I'm going to flip over my page here so you guys can see what it is that I'm doing. When you're thinking about artwork, think about those things that we've talked about for all of these years. So think about how you need to have, if it's a picture of outside, how you need to have a ground line. Or even if it's a picture inside, do you need to have an area where the ground or the, the wall and the ground are touching? Think about how all of the objects need to be below that ground line to make sure that they're not floating. So if I were drawing what's around me right now, is I have a door here, and that door goes right to the edge of that ground line. But anything inside of that ground line, I'm going to draw all those little details using a square on top. And then my door has long rectangles on it. And then other long rectangles. And when I'm describing this to someone else to draw, I could say, there's a door in my picture. It's on the the right side of my picture. It's above my ground line. In the door, there are two squares on top. There are four rectangles. They're in lines of two, I'm using those math terms that you know. Then other details to draw my picture. On the ground right now, there's a big bag that had all of my art supplies in it. And then that bag goes down and I'm really looking at what I'm drawing. This is an opportunity for us to draw from life, to draw what we're really seeing. So I'm going to draw the bottom of the bag and how the bag has really long, thick handles and how those handles are on both sides. And I'm not worried about erasing here. If I make a mistake, I'm just going to keep drawing because that's what I want to do. I want to just keep drawing and not worry about having to erase. Then there's also a cat in my picture, as you can hear his jingling all over the place. And I'm looking at him, and yes, he's a moving target, but that's okay. I can still keep drawing him. And he's standing up, and I'm thinking about what he looks like. He's got a long body, and he's now moved so I can't see his feet. That's okay. I'm just going to 
think about what he looks like. And he's got a very fluffy tail. Very fluffy tail. All right. And then any other details, if I want to add some of his markings on there, I can go ahead and do that too. And maybe I'm going to add one more detail in my picture. And maybe I'm going to add that there is the corner of the desk that I'm working on. So the deck desk has thickness to it. And then on top of that, I have my pad of paper that I'm actually drawing on right now. And that pad of paper has thickness as well. And then maybe there's my phone right here. Okay, so now I have my picture drawn. And I need to think about how I could take this drawing and describe it to someone else. So again, remember, we just drew all of these shapes. So how could I take these shapes and describe this picture? So we talked a little bit about how to do it with the door. But if I look at the shape, the opening of this bag, it almost looks like a diamond with curved edges. If I look at my cat's tail, he's got a very long tail that looks like an oval. So use these shapes to describe the picture to yourself. Take a minute. Now, go ahead and draw your own picture. Don't forget, when you're describing it to someone else, use your shapes, circle, square, triangle, oval, rectangle, diamond, pentagon, hexagon, octagon, star, heart, and moon. Remember also that you can cut, describe these shapes as cut in half or as having rounded edges like I described the opening of the bag, like a diamond with curved edges. All right, my people, have fun. I'd love to see pictures. You're welcome to email them to me. Talk to you soon.